make it yourself, Rose. Today I'm going to share a fun project for shaping cheese for holidays and other special occasions. I've always liked to find ways to make real food a bit more fun. They always make processed foods colorful for kids to want them. And I think, you know, there are lots of ways that you can make real foods more fun at home. Today I'm going to show you two methods for mostly shaping cheese. I plan on making a Halloween charcuterie board to use them. There's this kid in my son's school who has invited him over for Halloween in the past. And the mother likes to decorate their house for Halloween with cobwebs and she makes this elaborate snack table. And I just thought it would be fun to give them something a little bit more on the healthy side that they could eat, but it's still lots of fun. I have a bunch of candy molds and also cookie cutters that I've had for many, many years. And I'm gonna be using some of those. You can use silicone molds for this, which are really handy. It's really easy to pop the cheese out once it's cool. Uh, but you can also use a plastic mold like this because I'm going to be pre-melting the cheese before I place it into the mold. Uh, if you want to try to melt the cheese directly in the mold, you can try that. I haven't tried it, but I assume it would work. I just like to avoid using heat with silicone or plastic as much as possible. But, uh, you know, you can try that if you want. For this recipe, we are going to want to use higher fat cheeses. They melt a lot nicer. And you also would want to use a block cheese. Uh, shredded tends to have anti-caking agents that just might not make it melt as smoothly as we want for something like this. You want to be able to keep some of the details and the finished cheese shapes. So it's best with something without anti-caking agents. Now, my son was actually telling me, I don't know what video he was watching on YouTube, but he said that somebody was melting cheese in one of the experiments he was watching, and they actually rinsed the cheese off to get the anti-caking agent off, and that that worked for melting the cheese better. So I've never personally tried that, but you could also give it a shot. If anybody does try that, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Uh, Definitely, if all you have on hand at home is some shredded cheese and you're in a hurry to get started, why not try it out? I would try to rinse it off and let the cheese dry before I tried melting it just to make sure that it melts a lot smoother. You don't have water in there, but uh, I think it could definitely work. Now, apart from molding cheese, I'm also going to show you some methods for cutting it into shapes. Uh, I like using either a block or something like this that is a bit on the thicker side. You can just use regular sliced cheese, but you might want to double them up just because you want something with a bit of consistency. I also like to use tiny cookie cutters. You can use these big ones, but these are kind of big pieces for cheese. And also, if you want to be cutting something different, like I bought these slices of sobrasada. Uh, I thought it would be fun to use for pumpkin molds to give a little bit of contrast in color. Although, of course, you could use cheddar cheese that is also orange in color. I thought it would be fun to try to use the soft sausage. Obviously, if you have really big cookie cutters, you're going to have a harder time finding things that you can use them on. So if you can find tiny cookie cutters, I think that's your best bet. And I really don't have too much more to say about this. I am going to be using the air fryer to melt my cheese. I have these ceramic dishes that I use for that. These are meant for the oven. Here in Spain, they use this sort of terracotta cookware for certain rice dishes like arroz al horno. Uh, but it's interesting because you can also often buy provolone cheese and it comes with this. And you can see that this fits perfectly in there. This was actually sold with cheese to be able to put in your oven or an air fryer. And you can use either one. To melt your cheese but if you don't want to use your oven or you don't have something that you think will just work well for heating it in the oven you can also try in the microwave I don't use the microwave very often but I imagine it will work just fine and I think that's about it uh, let's get started 
First, I'm greasing the molds. I used a little bit of lard that I heated, but you can use some sort of oil or cooking spray, whatever you have on hand. I try to give this as light of a coat as possible. I want it to be able to come out of the molds, but if you have too much of the oil or whatever, the cheese will float in it and you won't see all the details in the finished mold. I have lightly heated the cheese on a low heat and I'm just going to spoon the cheese into the mold and flatten it as best as possible. You don't want to overheat the cheese because it will separate and it can just get golden brown. You don't want any oils to separate out from it. You just want to heat it as gently as possible. And like here in my terracotta pot, it's mostly the outer layers that are melted. So I'm taking it from the outer layers and just letting the residual heat from the pan melt the center part as I fill the rest of it. You do want to work relatively quickly depending on what you use to melt the cheese just so that it does doesn't solidify again while you're working. You want to get as many details as possible. Some of these molds that have uh, unusual shapes, especially if they're on the deeper side like this one, are a little bit trickier to fill. You can see that for the crossbones, I had to work a little bit harder to get the mold filled. And you wanna kind of press down on some of those. You want to avoid having as many air spaces in your finished mold as possible. Again, this is to keep as many details as possible. I'm just going to do the same thing with the plastic mold. You can see with the plastic mold, it's, it's fine to use. This cheese is not that hot, and so uh, there's not really any issues. Just, again, keep working it in as best as you can. It will level out mostly on its own, uh, but you want to at least try to give it a little bit of shape as best as you can. While my cheese is cooling in the molds, I am going to start working on some cheese shapes with cookie cutters. I'm using some Gouda here. I also have provolone and cheddar. These cheeses all work well. You want a solid cheese that doesn't crumble for this sort of thing, and these three cheeses work really well. You can use a knife to cut a bit thicker slices, about a fourth of an inch maybe. For larger pieces though, you might find that it's easier to use something like dental floss to continue cutting the cheese. Once you have cut your cheese to the desired thickness, you can then use the cookie cutters on it to make your fun shapes. One thing to keep in mind is if you have excess cheese from the outside of the cookie cutters, if you use a cheese like all three of these work well for both cutting into shapes and for melting, then you can use those to melt and make more shapes with your molds. Once my cheese had come to room temperature, I stuck it in the fridge to make it easier to remove from the molds. The skull and crossbones, I actually put in the freezer. That's why they look whiter than the other ones. I was afraid that those molds weren't as pliable and they were also deep and weirdly shaped. So I thought that that would help it hold its shape. I found that they were a little bit trickier to remove them the molds though, and I don't know, maybe freezing actually made it worse. The other problem with freezing is that it can change the texture of the cheese, although in this case, I didn't freeze it for very long. We didn't notice any changes in the cheese texture or flavor. Now that I have my various cheese shapes, I am going to use them to decorate a charcuterie board. Here you can see I made a cheese ball, severed hand for Halloween. I think the various colors and shapes of cheeses just make it so much more fun. So I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and if you try it out, I would love to hear about it and just have fun with it. Happy Halloween, guys. Mm -hmm.